Hello, everyone. Welcome to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Morales. And on today's show, I have Peter. And we have a good subject today. It's called Why Are Men Soft and What We Could Do About It to Change It? I know it's a long title. Obviously, it's a working title. First of all, this is called People on Dating. This is a topical conversation about the good and the bad of and uh, ugly of dating, courtship. Uh, no matter who you are, 18 to 80, you have a story uh, to tell. And one of the themes of this uh, this podcast is it's just a conversation, no judgment. So, Peter, first of all, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for no, having I, me. No, it's my pleasure. So, you know, um, I, I started hearing about this topic uh, maybe months ago, maybe even a year ago, about you know how some men are might be too soft when it comes to dating or or their relationship. Um, and I know I, I'll be the first one to admit that, yeah, I, I know on certain relationships, I've been very soft, um, you know, maybe taking more BS than I should have. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, one of the things I would do is, you know, yeah, you know, you got to confront it and, and talk about it. But, um, but when I saw there was no, any type of give or take, I was gone. I said, you know what, this ain't worth it. This ain't worth the hassle. This ain't mm -hmm. worth the stress. Um, so I, I, my yeah. thing was try to talk about it, but if not, then there's no yeah, other yeah. course, but for me personally was, was to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe being too soft kind of had you in the relationship for too long, probably. <laughs> maybe Listen, you I, I <laughs> definitely agree to that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely, um, this, you know, uh, when I was looking at your topics, this topic spoke to me a lot, you know, you know, and I know you're doing a lot of awesome things with this podcast. So I just wanted to help out and give you my personal experience. It is just a personal experience. You know, dating is very personal. You know, everyone has their own, um, everyone has their own experience, but I feel like, um, I'd like to share my personal experience, and I'm sure there's someone out there, particularly younger people, who who can benefit from it. No, I, I definitely agree. So, I mean, any stories that you want to sh uh, share, at least now, or maybe when you were a little younger, um, that you went yeah, through yeah. that changed you a couple of years later? I mean, like I said, for me, it was, I would say, a couple of years ago that I dated someone, and I realized that it was I don't want to say toxic, because it wasn't, but it, in terms of any type of rom uh romantic connection there was none uh mm -hmm. so I realized that it was just more of a of a friendship and you know I wasn't looking for that you know I wanted more mm -hmm. yeah well, so, why, do you think, why do you think there was no romantic collection con connection was there someone not um I, you know, well not? I I guess for her I guess she just didn't see me that way you know at the beginning I thought it was but mm -hmm. you know anytime I would try to make a move um you know there was a couple of excuses uh I'm not ready or or, you know, uh, no, yeah, yeah. And, you know, whatever it was, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and like I say, maybe, maybe you shouldn't see the, the confidence. Um, I definitely feel like I've been in your situation um, a few times. And, you know, sometimes I thought about it. Um, well, let me, let me, st let me step back a little bit. You know, when I saw the topic, it reminded me of a book that I read a few years ago. Um, it's called The Rational Male. I don't know if you've ever heard of that book. No, uh, who is the that rational by? male? Uh, the author is, um, he's written a few books about dating. His name is Rolo Tomasi. Oh, I heard that uh, name. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's funny. Rolo. I heard it in other podcasts. And it's funny, I, I, I wanted to reach out to him, but I'm like, oh boy, I don't know if I could get this guy. But, you know, oh, now that well, you mentioned yeah, it, I'm going to try to reach out to him. Once you get on the up and up, yeah, I'm sure it'll be like, oh, really? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure once this podcast <laughs> is, re, 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 uh, reaches its full potential, which I'm sure it will, he'll be reaching out to you. Oh, right, that'd be good. I'll definitely have him on. So, and I'll definitely put this to on. Reach the, out to him. He'll reach out to you. <laughs> I, that'll be even uh, better. So, I'll definitely yeah. put that on on the show notes. So, go ahead, talk about that book and talk about like your 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 experience. Like, what did you go through that made you? Whether you got the book after a relationship or before the relationship or even during the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, probably in between relationships, in, in between relationships, but it's not so much about the relationship, it's really about the more the subject matter of the book. It's really yeah. opened up my eyes a little bit, uh, or quite actually a lot. Um, and I'm certainly not, you know, for anyone that has read it or will read it in the future, I don't, I don't agree or disagree on everything that the author says in the book. But, but the kind of the theme of the book about the book is that uh, he suggests men to be, you know, be more brave, you know, be more adventurous, you know, um, you know, Go out there, date, make mistakes, um, you know, be confident. And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. Um, 
and you know understand that you know even and it's okay to have multiple girlfriends um, at the same time. Right, uh, right. Uh, if that's okay with you, you know it, it's right. it's kind of I think the author approaches the book uh, pro- approaches the the topic such that you know in a, in a way that you know we're not it's not trying to tell you what to do, but um, if you you should have options, you know you know having options. Will make you more confident. Listen, women do. Women. Um, I remember I, there was this a woman. I, my God, I was in my, probably my late twenties, and she she had told me straight out. Um, you know, we had met maybe previously a couple of months before a, a wedding, which was I think in the summer of 90, 91, 92. I can't remember the exact year. So I know I was in my late twenties. She was in her early twenties, and she told me straight out. You know, she had a boyfriend, but she was you know looking at her options and i was like mm-hmm. wow you know well, that's the first thing you know i heard that term yeah, you know and, <laughs> and, and the author says you know you know Rolo says he said you know women do this all the time as well so, yeah so you know they, they might be a little bit less explicit about it they might be more covert actually are generally more covert about it but they do the same thing right so it's not so bad you know probably the best advice is, you know, if you are going to sleep with multiple people, you know, use condoms, use protection. That's not, not, not that he's, he's suggesting that, but, you know, keep your options open. And the idea of, is, is the process, the process of, 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 you know, trying to balance multiple plates and having multiple options. This process will make you more confident. Right. It's right. that confidence that will get you the relationship that you want. Right. But, but the problem is a lot of men are not raised that way they're raised like such a, for example myself you know many of us are raised in this you know idealistic white picket fence uh nuclear family kind of um you know you know one man one woman uh you know ideal concept and it's kind of hard you know that's how we're raised that's how we're we were brought up and it's hard to break out of that and it's the ones that kind of maybe weren't raised quite that way or had some other influence early on in their lifestyle and they're in their life they're the ones that are the successful ones. They're the ones who kind of broken out of this, this mold are the successful ones in relationship and probably in, in many other ways as well. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny that you say that because, um, you know, I grew up with my grandfather, but, you know, by the time I reached 16, 17, 18, he was already in his late, maybe late, I don't know, I guess mid to late 70s. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have that male figure, you know, and I remember growing up, uh, and I would look at some of my friends, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, and I would see how would they, they would treat their women, even when they were married and all that. And I said, you know what, I want to do the opposite. I no, that's yes. what I'm going to do. I want to do the opposite. That's the problem. That's I'm the problem. gonna yeah, and I'm gonna be a gentleman. I'm gonna open the door, and and I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of times it just didn't work. Yeah, the I, problem is you, know, you went from one, you saw one extreme, yeah, into yeah. completely the other extreme, and. The book and probably my suggestion is in general is to kind of have more of a balanced rules approach don't be a jerk don't be an asshole you know you should treat everyone with respect um but don't be too nice yeah no and it's funny because you have a mystery about you you should you should be mysterious there should be you know um um, you should be a little bit of a bad boy don't be so good all the time you know yeah yeah you know it's funny i even had some of my female friends that are that i was very close to um say the same thing you got to be mysterious don't open up and and i even had i think it was one of the shows that i had uh i forgot what episode it is I, and it was what not to say on the first date where you know you sometimes you become too transparent and you just lay out all your laundry right at the right at her yeah. feet and one of the yeah. girls was saying um be a little bit more mysterious. Don't just volunteer everything on the first date. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I've done that where all of a sudden there's no second date, you know? Uh, listen, it could have been that she wasn't attracted to me whatsoever and she wanted a free meal, <laughs> but <laughs> that's another subject. But yes, I agree. Sometimes I, I was too soft. Um, and, you know, I would have women just sometimes after a while ghost me and all that. And Again, this is all when I was in my uh, late 20s, early 30s, and even up to a few years ago where I was treating this woman, you know, I thought, well, um, mm. but like I said, there was just no romantic connection and which was fine, you know, and mm. it was, and, and that didn't, I'm going to be honest with you, that didn't even bother me that we didn't have the romantic connection. It was other stuff that, because we had some side dealings together um, that bothered me more. 
Um, mm-hmm. And like I was telling our, my guest yesterday, I wanna, you know, that if, if, I, if I see her, I will be cordial, say, hello, how you doing? How's your mother? How's everything? Yeah, and I would do that. But I just make sure I go to the other side of the room, wherever she's at, I'm, I'm the opposite end. Because like I said, there was just, after a while, it was just not even a connection. But getting back to the well, that's subject. Why it's good to have, that's why it's good to have so many uh, other options, not many other options. Exactly. Other, other options. So, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know. Right. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so so I would say where in between, let's say, my 30s to a couple of years ago, um, I was a combination. with, And it's funny because I guess with certain women, I was too soft. And then with certain women, I was much stronger or, like you said, keep a balance. And it seemed to work, but I never realized it. I never thought yeah, about it that way. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, there was one woman that I, I did want to marry uh about 10 12 years ago and i remember we would you know when we would have our discussion you know i was forceful i wasn't soft or anything but then some things you know like i i I, thinking about it years later i i became that way again i became soft and i became you know like yes sure no problem i didn't want to do any confrontation Mm -hmm. uh confrontation is important yeah and in the last uh, again with the last one um I was a combination, I would say a combination of both. After a while, I just, you know, I just didn't want to take any more crap. And I just, you know, I I I felt comfortable being myself where yeah, before yeah. I wasn't, I wanted to be that gentleman. I wanted to open that door. And I'm not saying that I would change now, but I agree, you got to be mysterious. You got to, you know, not yeah, lay out your laundry. You yeah. reach that. So you're in a good place. And, and I think my point is ideally we want to reach this place earlier, maybe in our late twenties, in right. our thirties. You know, you know, early 30s rather than waiting later, later on, like, okay, so now I know actually what I'm supposed to do when I'm dating. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So, you know, exactly. I, mean, I grew up, I grew up very, I grew up in a Catholic household, very strict, you know, you know, we never really discussed relationships, you know, I was, we were, we were taught to kind of just, you know, go to school, work, study hard, and, you know, and you'll live a good life. And, you know, and now we, we know that that's not really the case. No, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> you know, you know, schooling is, is, uh, it's, you know, I, I think the, the whole point of school, just, you know, I have lots of, uh, I have lots of issues with school in general, but just, um, this is part of a bigger, larger issue I have with our, you know, modern, modern education, but I think we're focused too much on, uh, you know, the outcomes, the results, testing, and not in the growth, like the process, the mm-hmm. journey, you know, because the journey is, the goal <laughs> the yeah. journey is the goal you know you know like you know and that's the the process of discovering who you are the process of figuring things out on yourself not being spoon spoon fed uh sorry spoon fed things um is is the goal because that's right. true growth and that's how you grow that's how you grow in life that's how you grow in relationships yeah and i and i and it's funny because uh what I went through, I wasn't taught any of this stuff, you know, like I said, I did completely the opposite. Again, when I was in my twenties and thirties, thinking that will work. And then I, again, I didn't realize it until later in life, you know, you become self-aware, I guess, as you get older. And I realized I'm like, shoot, man, you know, if I was, if I was this way, you know, and not that way. If I was only more confident now, back then. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And, and it's funny because, uh, you know, we talk about confidence and we're talking with Peter and today's subject is, uh, is I hate to say the modern man, but are men too soft? And is and can we do something about it? Again, that's a working Some title. Are. Some are, and um, and for me, and I'll talk about a, a, a particular subject right now: uh, speed dating. And I remember I had gone to a few speed dating events, and I always have a great time. I haven't been to one uh, pre-pandemic uh, since pre-pandemic, and I remember you know when you do your speed dating, you know they give you uh, like a a uh, piece of paper with everybody's name and what table they are. And then you're supposed to write notes and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. yeah. So long story short, um, there, I think on two occasions on different, not on the same night, but two different occasions, I exactly, I went up to the woman after we finished talking, we had a mm-hmm. good five minute conversation. I told her straight out, I'm going to pick you. I said, if you're interested, pick me. If not, no hard feelings and we'll move on. But I'm just letting you know, I'm going to pick you. 
And you know, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to wait till the end of the, the evening and all that. And that's one of the few times you did, you <laughs> broke the rules. Exactly. Right? exactly. Really? You broke the rules. <laughs> exactly. Cause I told us, and this, I'm picking you. That's it. You know, and I did it on two occasions and it worked. They they were, you know, I guess they were like, oh wow, this guy is you know doing something different. And it's funny that because it's an awesome, awesome story. That is a and great And it story. did, and it did feel good doing that. Because I didn't follow the rules. I said, you know what? Screw that. I'm going to pick you and that's it. And on occasion, I've done that. But then sometimes I fall back into the old trick of being a little too soft, a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something. Too you much genuinely. Breaking, the rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, breaking exactly. the rules in a, you know, in a civilized way is right. something that we have to, you know, we have to train ourselves to do almost on a daily basis. Yeah, and, I like um, that. Break yeah, rules yeah, in a civilized yeah, yeah. way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like that's that. good. It's good to mention that because, you know, one of the I think the, the main theme, if anything, if anything about the main theme about the Rational Mail book is that rejection, rejection is better than regret. So you may mm. have gone up to those women and said, you know, and then they just, you know, did, did what you did, you know, broke the rules. And they said, oh, well, you know, no, I'm not interested, whatever. Um, or I just want to wait and see at the end of the, the, the speed. And we'll see. But, you know, at least you have no regrets, right? No, definitely no not. No, 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 definitely not. Um, obviously, when I was younger and, you know, again, let's say pre-40s, yeah, I had, a, I could probably count them on both hands, the regrets I had that I didn't approach or I didn't do anything because, you know, some of us, or I'm, I'm, let me not even name anybody else or me, where I, I'll, I'll assume that the woman is either taken or she's unapproachable or, oh, mm -hmm. I can see that she unless, doesn't want to be no, bothered. No, no, and then all no. of a sudden, you just, you know, you're putting all these no. ideas in your head. Unless you see that guy standing right there or you've seen yeah, her interact with the guy. Of course. Like the boy, you, know, you know, you don't want to, you know, I, I don't, I don't mess around with other girl, guys, girl. I definitely don't do that. That is. Right. red line that's that's the red line but but oh, no, yeah, no, i agree but i'm just saying when when they're by themselves or they wear maybe another girl or whatever whether it's a lounge or even at a network event um mm -hmm. like i went to one this monday um again at the time of this recording uh you know who knows when i gotta see when i'm gonna put this show out but at the time at, at this time i went to a, a, a networking event as a real estate event uh and i met two young ladies but you know they're in there like in their 20s but you know one of the women I hesitated to approach. I knew she was young, but I was it wasn't like an intention for me to to ask her out or anything. But in terms of business connections or all, all that, you never know. And then uh, she ended up approaching us because I was talking to a couple other people, and me and her stayed until probably 10, 10 30, yeah. um, which was again this past Monday, and we had a great conversation. Oh, uh, we exchanged numbers and everything, but it's for business purposes. And also she wants to be on the podcast. Um, but, you know, getting her perspective on dating, you know, now she's 24, you know, obviously she had a long way to go, but just getting her perspective on dating was really, you know, hearing a millennial's point of view was pretty cool. You know, but the point was, is just that different, right? Oh yeah, definitely. But the point was, is that, you know, um, here, I shot myself down by saying, oh, she's probably high end. She deals with, you know, high end clients. And no, we had a great conversation again. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I, yeah. don't shot assume, my, don't I, I was yeah, assuming yeah. and we had a great yeah. conversation. We talked about, again, this podcast, we talked about real estate stuff. So I, yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. I tend to yeah, shoot yeah, myself you, in the you foot. You realize <laughs> that by just going out there and just meeting lots of people and, you know, keeping your options open, you know, uh, uh, you know, like, like the author says, uh, spinning a lot of plates at the same time, like a juggler or, you know, magi magician. And you figure you figure that out. You realize that you know people. Uh, you know, a woman who seems unapproachable actually is very approachable. Yeah. You realize that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and mm -hmm. but Peter, how many times we've heard stories where a woman might say, you know, someone that's very attractive, you know, on a scale of like from eight to ten, they're in that range. And some of them say, and I heard stories and I read stories where sometimes guys don't even approach it because already they assume they're unapproachable. They have a boyfriend. They don't want to be bothered uh she looks like she having you know we 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 check off six seven boxes even before we even get a chance to talk to her and you know some of these women like i said what i read they don't get approached because yeah. we yeah. some of us assume all these things yeah 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 and that's why men are too soft because they keep <laughs> doing this process over and over and over again in their head and yeah you got to break break out of it you got to break out of it mm -hmm. yeah uh, I, yeah yeah but, you know and you know the 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 goal is 
uh, you know, monogamy or being in a long-term relationship should not be the goal. It right. feels like it should be the goal, but it's actually not the goal. The goal is the process. The goal is getting out there and having fun and, and being the best version of yourself and being confident and meeting the right person, that long-term relationship, that'll happen. That will happen because you did everything uh, that led up to that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so you, you did know, your process, you, know, and I think a lot you of did the steps. They just yeah. focus too much on, okay, I'm going to meet this one person and we're going to have this one amazing relationship and one, 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 and it's just going to happen. And that shouldn't be the goal. The process is the goal. Focus on the process. Focus on All the right. process. Focus on having fun and, and just being confident and, and meeting as many women as you can. And and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think too... Um where whether it's a family pressure or let's go society pressure and then family pressure which is mostly probably family pressure where you know they um they wanted to be married by a certain age 20 21 yes. 22 to yes. 25 yes. and a lot of my friends at that age were already married or going going with someone and then by the time they were in mid to late 20s they're already married and uh out the house you know again that was the goal of the parents to get them out the house and get them married but also, uh, uh, some of them that I knew got divorced a few years later because it's. It I think statistically, seventy-five like, percent of divorces, uh, marriages end up end in divorce. I mean, look at that. I mean, now, now it's seventy-five. Wow! And it's yeah, funny because yeah. I, I I read this statistic today um, that again. Uh, well, let me put let me rephrase it. I heard this statistic today from uh, uh, I was watching this um, a program on YouTube and. She said that 85% of divorces are initiated by women. So I was like, wow, that's a lot of women that are looking to get divorced now. And, you know, uh, some of the thing is infidelity and, che you know, cheating and all that. Yeah, but I yeah. also think that has a lot of it has to do that just not getting to know the person, you know, not yeah, getting, yeah. Um, uh, you know, knowing the person from A to Z, you know, you, you, before, you, before, maybe, yeah, before, maybe, before uh, you marry. Yeah, yeah. The, the exactly. Wrong, wrong person. <laughs> right. Exactly. So maybe uh, the woman realizes it first or, you know, maybe she found someone else that excited her or something but whatever it is i think uh like i said it comes back to uh you know some of us being too soft and uh and, and also trying to change an idealistic view uh yeah. not even you know sometimes it's not even being too soft it would be very very aggressive but just having an idealistic view of of, of relationships and and marriage and that this idea that there's there's one person out there for you. It's for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. listen, like you said, what women have done it, they'll have multiple options, you mm -hmm. know, but like you said, they're so discreet about it, and they could hide it and we yeah, won't know yeah, yeah. unless it's, you know, shown to us in our faces. While mm -hmm. most of us guys, you know, will blow it the first, <laughs> the first <laughs> month because we, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. say something yeah, it stupid. It doesn't really matter if women yeah. do it. Well, I suppose women do it. I do so a certain extent. It's really just, it's just kind of um, it kind of just makes more sense from, um, uh, you, you know, from, from a, a, a relationship point of view, it just makes more sense to, you know, consider, try your options, um, you know, uh, you know, meet as many women as you can, and, and you'll find the right one, you'll find the right one, and that'll build up your confidence, and then once you have all this confidence, it's, it just, it, you know, the, it the, shows, you know, yeah, they, it they definitely can't shows. see it, it shows, it'll show, it'll, you know, they'll know you're confident, and, and then you'll just meet the right person. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I think some of the key points is, is uh, you know, just breaking, like I said, break the rules, but in a, in a civilized way, which I yes, like, yes. you know, mm -hmm. uh, don't assume, right? That's yeah. uh, probably the, uh, you know, it's, yes, it's, yes, that, it's like if, don't, with assume, if. Don't, don't assume. You see someone you like, don't assume. Yeah, you, have you know, and, ha and have options. I, I, I wrote like have options when you're young, but really even older guys, like some of the guys I hang out with that are in their 50s, they, 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 they got their options, you know, sure, because they're sure. meeting women either their age or a few years young or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I also think just just going out and just because you know it's 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 like in, in business it's dating until you meet the right partner and it's yeah, the same yeah. thing in in a romantic situation you keep on going out you keep on going out whether it's at work or or mm -hmm. wherever it may be in a, in a social club or whatever or with through friends again you're going through the through the motion of dating someone getting to know them well that's not for me let me move on 
And like you said, I, mm-hmm. I do like. And then it. we network, don't we? We network for business. We network all right? the time. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> same no, no. thing for dating. Yeah, we, no, exactly. We do, it, we do it and we enjoy it and we make a big deal out of it, right? We we have business cards and websites and LinkedIn and all this. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, isn't whole, that the truth? Whole, whole, you know, you know, whole life, uh, you know, all these processes around networking. Yeah. Um, but we don't apply it to our relationships. No, exactly. So for you, Peter, you know, you, you've gone through your ups and downs and all that from combination of reading the book and going out as much as you can and being around, uh, you know, some of your friends like me and, 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 and the, uh, the crew that we know that we hang out with, what are some of the things that you've learned that you applied, you know, in your dating, uh, you know, from, let's say, from, let's say five years ago to now, right? That's a, that's mm-hmm. a big gap. You can learn yeah. a lot within three to five years anything that you might have done differently oh, go yeah. have, have fun in life do something you know don't do the same run of the mill thing you know um take 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 some chances in life you, you know uh, um if, if it doesn't kill you it'll give you you'll have great stories <laughs> okay great stories to tell travel you know um make yourself interesting ah uh, yeah that's I, that one i i've heard before yes make yeah, yourself yeah, interesting yeah. make yourself mysterious mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i like that we're talking with peter yes, yes, I went, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. talking with peter today's subject is is the modern man too soft again it's a working title people i'll definitely have a better title by the time this show is posted and you know we came up with some i think some good ideas or i'll say more peter because yes. peter's reading a book which i definitely want to uh look at it, the rash the rational male right Yes, uh, the rational man. Yeah, and it's funny because I've 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 heard him on on different podcasts. Uh, I know he has a huge following. Um, you know, going forward, Peter, like I said, for me, um, like I said, that last relationship was, and I and I hate to say it was bad because I'm not going to say that she she was not a bad person, but I guess she's been through a lot of relationships that I just happen to be, and I hate to say a doormat. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because then that makes makes myself even softer than 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 I was, (laughs) you know. But again, after a while, I just couldn't put up with it anymore. Um, Where I just said I'm out, you know, and I had no second thoughts, no regrets or anything like that. We tried to talk it out, but you know, there were some subjects that she wouldn't touch. Um, And I said, you know what? Then I'm out, you Mm know. but, and you've been through this enough, enough, and you're good. You're in a good place in your life that you have the confidence. Better than I was because you know that there's yeah. someone better out there for you. Better than I was a couple of years ago. I, I definitely admit that because you know what? I became more aware, self awareness. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like some of the things that I went through in that relationship, um, I realized after I'm like, my God, you know, uh, the groundwork was laid already there. And I didn't, I didn't listen. I heard everything, but I didn't listen. Um, so, and I, and I repeated this story a couple of times to some of my friends and all that. Um, but it's a learning experience. Again, you yeah, know, you yeah, go, listen, listen, eat, listen to your experience, your spirit, your experience. Speaks, and my speaks gut. Your, you know, and yeah, my yeah, gut. And your gut. Your gut speaks to That's you. That's what, your yeah. Speaks to you, your gut speaks my, to you. My gut. You know, I mean, all the red flags went up and I ignored it. Um, and, you know, and then you realize, I'm like, shit, it was right there all along. <laughs> and I just let it, I let it slip. So yeah, every, but, every experience you have will, will stay with you and it'll speak to you at the right moment. So yeah, yeah. listen, that's good advice for yourself and, and for me and for everyone listening. No, no, definitely. You know, and the thing is too, Peter, uh, what I like about, um, about a topic like this it, again it, it just you become more aware of what's going on you become aware especially aware when you you know when you're around certain friends and certain acquaintances and I see sometimes like how some people interact and I'm like whoa I don't want to do that you know I mm-hmm. think if if there's not a connection then I'm one of those guys that I can move on I don't yeah. linger I don't need closure I'll that's just good. move that's on. Good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, you know what? That's, if, that's a sign of maturity. Like with the, with the, um, uh, with the, with the um, woman I went out with a couple of years ago. Uh, I didn't need any closure. I knew she didn't feel romantically the same as I felt. So okay, you know, like I said, it was just some other side stuff that bothered me more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, and I, I overcame it. And like I said, it, it, you know, when I look back at, at certain things with her. Again, 
nothing about the relations. I don't even think about that. I think about, again, more of the side stuff that we had together that bothers me more. But probably a younger that. version of yourself would have pined over it a lot more and would have uh, <laughs> probably, yeah, would have suffered yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I've been through, like I said, some relationships that, you know, when I, when I, you know, either they break up with me or I break up with them and I, I just move on. I, I, I always been that way. Um, but it's, it's certain things that might bother me like, whoa, I didn't get, a, I didn't get a chance to even, uh, show my true self. But then again, you know, during that time, especially in my thirties and, you know, early forties, I was way softer than I am now, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Same, <laughs> so, here, same here, <laughs> you know, so now, um, again, you know, by going to speed dating and just being, you know, reading about, uh, how women like men that have confidence, I just, Yes, at times I might even shut myself down again, but for most part, I do go up and I'll say something, you know, I, I, you know, because I might miss an opportunity and I was tired of that. I was tired of that and seeing other guys, you know, make the leap, take that chance and not even care whether they scored or and not. They're, they're the successful ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, First of all, Peter, I want to thank you so much for being on People on Dating. I okay. really appreciate it. Um, and before I let you go, uh, anything else you want to touch base on? Uh, anything else? Oh, no, boy, I think we covered everything. I guess maybe just yeah, the best, best piece, piece of advice is to just go out there, be brave, be confident, make mistakes, uh, to focus, on, focus on the process. Um, uh, don't 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 focus so much on on finding that one true love because the process will lead to that 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 whatever goal that you want. Yeah, no, sounds good. Well, anyway, first of all, again, Peter, thank you so much for being on People yeah, and Dating. Thanks for having me. This is I an awesome really, podcast. And well, I, I appreciate do some great things and, and change some lives. Change some well, lives. I hope so. I hope so. Well, <laughs> listen, you started with me, so thank you. You know, you made me think a little bit more. Well, anyway, Peter, I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye. Well, everyone, that was Peter C. Peter, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. Really appreciate it. You can find him on LinkedIn. I'll put it right on the show notes. You can find me at peopleondating.com. That's peopleondating.com. You can also find me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Please go to Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe, leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, just a couple more things. Remember, this show is just a conversation. No judgment at all. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, I'm Will Morales. Have a great day, everyone, and please stay safe. Bye.